Welcome back to Tech News. Today, Microsoft is giving people an option for extended updates for Windows 10 for free. Or rather, it doesn't cost you anything aside from your soul. And in the UK, in an attempt to not allow publishers to abandon games, they might stifle the entire gaming industry. Let's jump into it. Windows 10 reaches end of life on October 14th, 2025. As this date draws near, it's time to start thinking about what you're gonna do to continue to receive security updates. One option is the ESU program. This is a paid program that extends security updates for Windows 10 until October of 2026. It costs $30 for consumers, but some people don't wanna spend $30. If that's you, then Microsoft is offering this program for free, but there's kind of a catch. First, let me go over how you can get the ESU program for free. The first method involves enabling Windows Backup to sync settings and files to OneDrive. This option requires signing into or creating a Microsoft account and activating Windows Backup. Once enabled, your PC is automatically enrolled in the ESU program. Now, the downside to this method is that OneDrive only offers five gigabytes of free storage. So if you have more than five gigabytes of files to back up, you will need a paid storage plan, which starts at $1.99 a month for 100 gigabytes. The second method allows users to redeem a thousand Microsoft reward points for the ESU program. Reward points are earned through activities like using Bing for searches or using Microsoft Edge. You can even earn reward points for making purchases through the Microsoft Store. Now, accumulating a thousand reward points is relatively easy and can often be achieved in less than a week of regular Bing searches for free. Now, this method avoids the OneDrive storage costs, but it still requires a Microsoft account. If you're a keen observer of details, then you already noticed the catch. And no, the catch is not OneDrive storage fees. However, that is kind of a trap all in of itself. The catch in this case is that Microsoft is using a free enrollment to the ESU program to promote their other products. First off, both free options for the ESU program require a Microsoft account. This further proves that the primary purpose of Microsoft accounts is to make data harvesting easier. Because why else would Microsoft be willing to essentially pay you $30 to get you signed into a Microsoft account? But who knows, maybe that's just a conspiracy theory in me talking. However, this is being used as a way to push Microsoft products like Edge, OneDrive, and Bing. Maybe Microsoft thinks that if they can get you to use Edge or Bing for a week, then you won't switch back later. This will increase their browser and search market share, ultimately, if it works. I have to say though, I'm not even mad. This is actually kind of a creative way for Microsoft to promote their own products. But with that said, I still recommend just paying the $30 if you wanna to continue to use Windows 10. For $30, the ESU program supports Windows 10 Home, Pro, and the Education and Workstation editions. And a single ESU license covers up to 10 PCs. Believe it or not, this is actually a pretty good deal, considering the fact that a business ESU license costs $61 for the first year and only covers a single computer. So 10 computers with a business ESU license would cost $610 for the first year compared to $30 for a consumer license. And best of all, the consumer license doesn't require a Microsoft account. At least if you pay the $30, it doesn't. You may say that the only reason why I recommend paying the $30 is because I don't agree with Microsoft accounts. And you'd be right. Personally, I believe that the whole concept of the Microsoft account is an attempt by Microsoft to get people to use Windows as a service. The best way to send a message to Microsoft that it isn't going to work is by continuing to use local accounts. Because personally, I don't feel like paying a monthly fee for Windows. I don't even like the fact that we have to pay to receive updates for Windows 10. 
But with that said, there's always the option to just upgrade to Windows 11 for free, and that has the added benefit of using Windows 11 with a local account. And I'm sure Microsoft isn't happy about that option either. Now, it is true that many computers don't meet the Windows 11 system requirements. Those requirements are easy to bypass though for most systems. I've done tons of videos on installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, and some of the methods are so easy that the requirements at this point are completely irrelevant. But with that said, Microsoft is offering the ESU program for no cost out of pocket. You just have to jump through some hoops by using some of Microsoft's products. I wonder though, if Microsoft realizes that the reason they are having to essentially pay people to use their products is because there are better alternatives. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. In other news, the next story has me kind of conflicted. In the UK, there's an initiative called Stop Killing Games. This is a consumer-driven movement aimed at preserving video games by preventing publishers from rendering titles unplayable after support ends. On one hand, I hate to see games die once the publisher stops supporting them. But on the other hand, I think that the government screws up everything they get involved in. And ultimately, the consequences of this could make the problem worse. The initiative, which started in 2024, seeks to address the growing issue of games dying once the publisher no longer wants to support the game. They seek to update consumer law to prohibit publishers from disabling games without providing a means to continue playing them, such as offline modes or private server support. The initiative is definitely popular, being it's gained 150,000 signatures, exceeding the 100,000 needed for consideration. This is significant considering the fact that the earlier attempt was dismissed back in February. However, I may get a lot of hate for this, but I think the dismissal was valid. The justification for the dismissal was that the existing consumer protection already applies to games that are misleadingly sold as being playable indefinitely. But the initiative doesn't demand infinite publisher support, but insists that the games remain functional after being shut down. However, skepticism still persists about government action given most lawmakers limited tech and gaming knowledge. I don't think we really take this consideration to heart as often as we should. I mean, do we really want legislation created on subjects that legislatures have no knowledge on? I can tell you right now that the best way to get nonsense laws is to allow people that have no idea what they're talking about creating those laws. I mean, here's the thing. A perfect example of this is the UK mandated USB-C charging ports. Yes, it's annoying that different smartphones have different charging ports. However, mandating that all smartphones use USB-C isn't even taking into account what comes after USB-C. This will inevitably stifle innovation when the next superior charging point port technology comes out and smartphone manufacturers are forced to use the old outdated USB-C ports. So what are the ramifications going to be for forcing publishers to provide a means to continue playing a game after support ends? The ramifications will likely be a stifling in innovation in games. Why would a publisher risk a new feature if they have to think about supporting that feature indefinitely? For instance, the Max Payne series doesn't work on Windows 10 or 11. I mean, it can be made to work, but it's kind of a pain. 
<laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> so should we force Rockstar Games to patch all of their previous games every time a new operating system comes out? Now, I'm gonna show my age here, but there was a game called Street Rod that came out in the late 80s with a sequel called Street Rod 2 that came out in the early 90s. And it was actually a lot of fun. This game was published by a now defunct publisher called California Dreams. So, who's responsible for making sure that this game perpetually works until the end of time? Now, I don't live in the UK, so why am I even worried about this? Well, you see, the problem is, is that manufacturers and publishers don't create different products for different locations or regions. If they have to comply with laws in the UK, then I'm pretty much required to comply with those laws created by people that have no authority over me. I mean, a great example of this is in the UK, there's this stupid law that requires a special tax on camcorders. Because of this stupid law, cameras like the one that I'm currently using right now to record this video are limited to recording 29 minutes of video in order to not be considered camcorders and be subject to pay an additional tax in the UK. But here's the thing, there's no such law in America, yet I still get burdened by a law that I, when I have to stand up, walk around my set here, and push the record button again. And here's the thing, that's if I notice the recording stopped. I can't tell you how many times videos have been ruined because I thought I was recording when I wasn't. In fact, I better make sure I'm still recording now. The reason for this is because Canon doesn't make UK specific firmware, and in America, the firmware is the same firmware that they use in the UK. And it, of course, complies with UK law. Ultimately, though, I don't even see how this initiative can even be implemented. You can't force game publishers to support a game that they no longer sell or even desire to support. That's called slavery. And most first world countries have banned that a long time ago. And I also don't think it's a good idea to force game publishers to release source code for their products because ultimately that's intellectual property that belongs to them and they should be able to make the decision on whether or not to release that. Some of that code might be used in their newer games and it could hurt them to release it. So I don't see how this could be implemented without violating the rights of the publishers themselves. Does that mean I think it's right for them to just abandon games? No, I think it's screwed up. I wish every company was like Valve, who is still releasing security patches and engine updates for the original Counter-Strike that was released over 20 years ago. And trust me, I checked before I wrote this script. They really are. But we can't just force publishers to do what we want them to do. We can, however, vote with our dollar and not purchase content or titles from publishers that we don't agree with. And that's way easier to implement than some random law. But with that said, we only have two stories today instead of the typical three because I talked way too much about the first two stories and I didn't want this video to go on too long. I was going to follow up on another story we did a few weeks ago about Nintendo Switch 2 being bricked based on their anti-piracy measures. It turns out people are buying used Switch 2s that are already banned. Another one of those unintended consequences. Or maybe in this case, it was an intended consequence. I don't know. If, you're, if you'd like to hear more about that, then let me know down in the comments below and I may add it to next week's news video. But thanks for sticking with me till the end. If you like this video, then you'll probably like one of these as well. As always, you guys have a great day.